All right, welcome to part two of the uh, Elements and Principles Design Poster Project. In this tutorial, we're gonna basically cover how to create a new document and basically uh, you know, basically uh, learn how to do some photo manipulation. Uh, first thing you do is launch Photoshop. I have a doc down here at the bottom, so I've already opened it up. You just click on the little PS icon, or you go to the Windows symbol and look for in the apps your Adobe Photoshop on here in the list. I have Adobe Photoshop 2020 open right now. Or if you're on a Mac, you can go to the apps folder and essentially do the same. Once you do that, you'll see the welcome screen, which I have here. You can see several files I've had open in the past. And so what I wanna do is click on um, this rhythm file, which I had open before, and I'll go file open and uh, find the emphasis one also and open up that one. So this is where I was before. So you basically just go file open to open up a current uh, image, you just have to navigate through and find it. So uh, to create a new document, you'll see with each of these, they have all these layers here. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about layers, but um, to create the same size, we're gonna go to the file and the new uh, category. And so uh, with the welcome screen, you can do the same thing, click on the new category. And then uh, basically what we're gonna do here is click on uh, print here and choose tabloid size. So the tabloid size is 11 inches for the width by 17 inches for the height by 300 for resolution. And it's RGB color mode. And I will use 8-bit uh, file format. All this is sort of technical information. If you're new to Photoshop, don't worry about it. Main thing is uh, 11 by 17 by 300. Uh, we, we want enough pixel resolution to give us uh, a good enough image size. So once we do that, we just click create here. And at this point, I could start bringing in images and there's lots of different ways to do that. Um, of course, I can go file open and it will navigate me to a folder and I can uh, basically you know, select those images and bring them in. I prefer a much easier way, uh, but before I go there, what I wanna cover real quick is just how to go about finding images and downloading them. So I have um, Google open here. And uh, if I, I typed in Michelangelo here, and uh, I figured he'd be a good artist to look at for drawing, and I clicked on images. And so once I do that, you'll see a ton of stuff uh, about Michelangelo in terms of images uh, with different categories here. And I could, I could emphasize this more. I could say Michelangelo and then add drawing, and then uh, I would have more drawings that pop out here. Now you don't wanna just grab one of these and, and drag it into the stage. Um, you could do that, you could drag it in here, but what happens when you do that, uh, depending on the image, uh, it's just gonna be really, really small when you do that to drag it in here. You can see here the pixel size is 275 by 183. So what you're gonna wanna do instead, I recommend is click on the image, uh, go to the maximum size over here on the right, you can see it, and then right click and in here, you can go to save image as and then basically save it to some folder. So uh, that's what I would recommend doing. Now, um, I already have images saved, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and uh, open up my folder here. And I'm gonna start dragging out some of these images here. So I'm just gonna drag out this one. All I, all I gotta do is drag it over and drop it in. Once you drop it in, um, you basically can scale it just by grabbing the corner and it will scale uniformly. In the past uh, versions of Photoshop, you used to have to hold the shift key to maintain proportions. Uh, what happens if you hold shift now is you stretch and bend the image. And we really don't want distortion with any of these images. So if you accidentally you know, hold the key like shift and did this, what you can do is click on the, um, I call it the Ghostbuster symbol, but it's the cancel symbol here at the top and that will kind of cancel it out. Um, and basically then I can just uh, bring it in and drop it again in. So I'll bring it in here, drop it in. Now what I can do is I can scale it down by grabbing a corner and then reposition it wherever I want and then just hit the enter or return key to accept the transformation or click on this little checkbox, both do it. So uh, once I do that, I can then move it around and I'm using in my uh, tools over here on the left, the top tool, it's known as the move tool. So if you had the marquee selection tool selected, which is usually default and you accidentally clicked in here and did this thing, all you gotta do to get rid of that is go to select at the very top here and then deselect, and that will deselect your selection, and then click on the arrow tool. 
Uh, it's one of those weird things about Photoshop is it tends to default to the uh, marquee selection tool. So uh, sometimes I forget to even remind students about this, but grab that top tool and you can move it around. So now I can bring in other images. So let's drag some more. So um, I like this one a lot. I'm gonna drag this one in. This is from the Sistine Chapel. These are studies by Michelangelo. Again, uh, I can move it around. I can scale it up or down, right? Just by grabbing a corner here. I'll make this a little bit smaller. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter on the keyboard except this time. Now, uh, notice that this image is in front of this image. And if you over here, look over here in your layers palette, yours may look a little bit different. You may have your properties open like this. Um, I just collapsed it by clicking on the properties tab here. Um, so I can show you all the layers here. But um, you can simply drag these uh, up or down to move one in front of the other. You'll notice this one has a little bit of white trim to it though. You can see it here. Um, we can fix that later on, but um, I think I'll just reverse these for right now and have this one in front of it. This one has a little bit of white trim too. So uh, basically, that's how you move the uh, photos in, in here. So let's go ahead and add, I'll probably add just like maybe two more. Maybe uh, this one, and I'll keep this one kind of large. I might even scale this one up a little bit, make it kind of like a background, it's just a leg study. He did all these anatomy studies that are really cool, and I'm gonna drag this one below the other one. So I have the, the head image in front of this one. And then um, maybe, I don't know, maybe this one. And sometimes it's hidden depending on where you uh, position it. So this one's already below the other images, which is kind of cool. So I think I'll scale this one up and maybe I'll rotate it. So I haven't shown rotation, but if you go to the outside corners here, you can kind of drag and rotate and you'll see the value change up here at the top. You can hold the shift key and what that'll do is it'll kind of lock into increments. So um, if I cancel out of here and redo this, I'll do this one more time, drag it in here, drop it in. I'll move it up, scale it up. And then I go over here to the corner and then hold shift. You'll see it starting to snap to these increments. And uh, now I have it set to 90 degrees here so I can kind of bring it up, something like that. And then you'll see it, it'll look really pixelated. And uh, Photoshop, what it's doing is interpolating the data and trying to save on memory. And so uh, once you hit enter return, the resolution will improve uh, quite a bit. So you can see there, it's a lot better. Uh, but sometimes if you do have really low res images, that can be a problem. So uh, going back to the search menu here, when you do search for images, you wanna make sure, uh, I sometimes do this, I'll click on the tool settings here, choose size and choose large instead of any size. But quite often if I just choose any size and then look for the dimensions here, as long as it's around you know, five, 700 pixels, uh, this one has 1400 by 1100, you should be good. What you wanna avoid is something like two or 300 pixels, something really small, thumbnail kind of preview just doesn't quite work. Um, now, let's see how we can get rid of maybe these, these white uh, background areas, like this layer here. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna learn how to uh, zoom in. If you click on the zoom tool here, you can kind of click and drag and kind of look at it. Um, and then you can see there's this white edge around here. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to get rid of some of this stuff. So there's these selection tools on the left here and I'm gonna go to the uh, magic wand tool. And the way I'm doing this is I'm holding down the mouse on this tool and going down to the magic wand. So uh, that's one way to do it. You can also hit the uh, shift W and that will kind of rotate through and so you see this little icon looks like a, a wand. And if you just click on the white area here, you'll see it kind of goes all around. Uh, and then you just have to hit the delete key or backspace key. Now, um, one thing it's, it's telling me to do here is, is I can't do this because this is what known as a smart object. So um, I have to rasterize this layer first. So I'm gonna right click and rasterize layer, and then I'm gonna delete it. Uh, the reason why it's a, uh, a smart object, when there's no smart object is because basically what I've done here is when you drag them in, they're uh, protected images. So uh, another easier way perhaps to uh, get rid of that white is to change the blend mode on your uh, image here. And a lot of images will be just fine, but I'll show you this real quick. If I select this image, you can see it has white right here on the edge. I'm gonna click in here and switch this to multiply 
or um, yeah, darken could do it. Now it is starting to blend through with the other image, which is an issue. So this is why I tend to like masking uh, better than uh, or deleting the pixels than actually um, uh, using the blend mode in this case. So let's go ahead and do that trick again with the magic wand since you've just seen it once before. Uh, before I do it, I'm going to right click again because these are smart objects. They have this little corner here that's indicating a smart object. You can see it's a little bit different than this one. And the reason why is when you drag it in here, it, it makes it automatically a smart object. Smart objects are basically uh, protected sort of envelopes around the image. And it's great for scaling because you can scale it up or down and the photo doesn't lose any kind of resolution. So right now I wouldn't want to take this image and start to scale it up and then scale it down quite a bit. In fact, I'll kind of demo this real quick. I will scale this guy really big and then hit enter and then I'll hit control T and I'll scale it really small. <laughs> and then hit enter, and then I'll scale it back up really big, and then hit enter. And you'll start to see, uh, it takes a while, but you'll start to see some uh, degradation in the resolution. It didn't actually change too much on this, but you really, you really will start to notice it later on. Uh, so it's something to be careful of. So typically with images, I tell people to scale down is better than up, but again, for this project, uh, as long as the resolution isn't too pixelated, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Again, I'm going to select this layer here, which is this one here, which has the white border. And then I'm going to right click on it and go down to uh, rasterize layer. And that will get to the smart project uh, part. Then I can grab my magic wand, click in the white area. Whoop, see now I selected everything there. If this happens, you can simply um, go select and then a deselect. The hotkey is control D or command D. I'm kind of a hotkey nut. So when you get really into Photoshop, you can um, really learn those hotkeys. So again, I'm just clicking on a little bit of white. Sometimes you can uh, zoom in to do this. So if you're really new to Photoshop, you can hit Control plus or minus to zoom in. Uh, so I'm gonna click on this little white area here and then I'm gonna hit the delete key and then Control D to deselect. So there we go. So now we have our images in there. We have uh, covered basically how to move them around, how to rotate. Um, and the, the thing is, if you need to change the scale of something or rotate it later on, we didn't cover this yet, you can do this hotkey, it's Control T uh, or Command T on a Mac. And uh, once you do that, then you can uh, free transform it again, you can rotate it, you can pretty much do all those different things, which is pretty cool. If you hold the Shift key, you'll scale it and, squ and squish it. Again, I'm going to cancel out so that I don't... Um, except those uh, transforms, but it's under the edit menu here. So it's edit, uh, free transform, so control T. So I know that's a lot for this beginning uh, tutorial. If you're new to Photoshop, we cover lots of different things. We cover basically how to open up the application, how to create a new document, just go file new, right? Um, create a, uh, click on the print, and then choose tablet size, right? And then click open to create. Um, once we've done that, we learned how to uh, save our images off the, the net, basically creating a, a group of folder of images, how to simply drag them in. So if we drag them in, it's real easy. Uh, basically comes with a bounding box. Quite often it will be pixelated uh, until you, you scale it up or down and then you hit enter or return on the Mac and then you'll see better resolution. This image is a little bit, uh, actually it's not too bad. Um, and then we went over on uh, how to stack in here. So you can drag the layer and pull it below the other layer. And it, you can kind of think of it like a hamburger or sandwich. The top layer is the most visible and the one below is the least visible behind there. And then we actually uh, learned how to actually delete the edges. We actually cover a lot in this tutorial. So uh, this image here we can do. Uh, you can see here this little, little edge here. It's pretty similar in color, but you can use this uh, magic wand tool again. If you have any other tools selected here, it's the one, two, three, fourth tool down. Just hold the mouse on that, move over, and then drag down. Or again, you can hit that Shift W to kind of rotate through them until you get that magic wand, and then click on the corner. This one, it, it, the colors are too similar, so it's not going to do that that selection that I want. So uh, this is where another type of selection tool might be uh, good, like the rectangular marquee tool. So I could select the part that I want, 
like say I want to keep this amount of the image and then I want to delete the rest if I hit delete key now what would happen is well nothing because I have to I forgot to do this I have to right click in here and rasterize layer remember to do that and then uh, if I delete it now it'll delete what's in here but if you go to the select menu here and go to inverse it will basically flip this selection and now if I hit the delete key you'll see I get rid of those edges around the outside then I can just go to select and deselect and voila just like that we have our image in there uh, and then again if you want to free transform it again it's control T or command T on the Mac and that will give you the ability to rotate the image and uh, scale it up uniformly and again if you hold the shift key you distort the image typically you don't want to do that so I, I try not to do that unless you have the older version of Photoshop in that case when you hold shift you're actually are uh, scaling it up and down uh, one other trick if you want to scale it up from the center you can hold the alt key and grab here and you'll see it's scaling from the center here uh, the that would be the option key on the Mac I do like these hotkeys so uh, oh, looks like there's a little bit of junk on here on the side so anytime you see stuff like that uh, again what you can do is just reselect the area so again just use that selection tool kind of reselect so that must have been off the edge and that's why it didn't delete and then we'll go to select and inverse and then delete by hitting the, the backspace or delete key. And then uh, deselect and then go into select, deselect, hotkey, control D. So I hope this wasn't too much. Uh, it's basically just photo manipulation, moving images around. Watch this tutorial again. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. Again, in the next tutorial, we'll cover uh, how to manipulate text and then do some adjustments. We may even rehash some of this stuff and uh, to get comfortable with it. It, what I want to explain is just don't be freaked out. It takes some time to get comfortable with this program. I remember when I first started, it took me a long time to learn these things. So uh, don't feel uncomfortable in any way. And I hope you enjoy experimenting with uh, Adobe Photoshop. Until next time, see you soon. Cheers.